Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. I am just sitting and recording this intro and outro on my phone because at the end of the video, I realized that my mic battery had died. So there's like the very last quarter of the video is a voiceover, but it's just going over pilots anyway. So it all flowed just fine, but obviously I had to come back and do a proper intro. So we are doing a palette declutter video today. I did a declutter of my entire makeup collection not too long ago. I went through my palette drawer and I kind of cheated. I didn't think that many people would mind. I just went through and pulled out things that I thought I was gonna declutter and didn't really go palette by palette. But as they were the comments, I saw a lot of you guys were like, um, no, we like seeing the other palettes in your collection. So that is what we're doing. Going through all my drugstore palettes, mid-range, high-end palettes, and just doing a full, thorough eyeshadow palette decluttered. You guys spoke and I listened, so hopefully you enjoy. Let me know before you get to the end how many palettes you think I ended up decluttering. Let's go ahead and get into the declutter. Okay, so here is the before of the top drawer and then the bottom drawer. This one normally doesn't even close because there's other palettes on top that are sitting on my desk right now. So I guess we'll just start off. I think I'm gonna try to keep all the palettes together, like ColourPop, look at those. Too Faced, look at those. Huda Beauty, look at those. I can tell you now, Huda Beauty, I don't know if any of those will be decluttered, but there's other palettes that I've just been holding on to. We're gonna kick it off with J-Cat Beauty. These are their, I think, Noche or Dia and Noche's palettes. So this one I haven't even touched yet, but I keep looking at it thinking like, oh, but it would be fun to do like a pink and purple look. But right when I look at these, I have so many ColourPop shades that are similar to this. So this is going to be our first declutter. As you can see, these shadows here are incredibly fragile. They're almost like pressed pigments, but they're those shadows that are like molten metallic. The color payoff is amazing. I love this deep, dark olive shade. This is one that I obviously get use out of. I actually really like the champagne shades in these two. But after swatching it, I remember the mattes in here weren't the most pigmented like you could build them up to get to the point that you wanted but I was really only holding onto the palette for the shimmers while these are stunning I know I have so many shadows specifically from like k-beauty brands that look a lot like this so it might just be time to let this one go our next brand is makeup revolution while I haven't reached for this Emily Noel palette in quite a while she's just a content creator that I love I was so excited to go out and purchase this palette to support her so I am still gonna keep it in fact when I look at this palette this shade right here corduroy was one that I absolutely love so I need to dig back into it I did actually already get rid of the other Soph X or Soph, Sophie collection. What is this? Soph X Revolution Extra Spice. I don't know if the other palette was just spice. The silver in here is amazing. It reminds me a lot of the ColourPop, I think in Liberty, I've mentioned that before. This one I do wanna keep because the matte shades in here are also really nice. However, I've had this palette for quite a while and I just really haven't used it. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with it. This has been in my drawer for quite a while and I may have used it once. I have a friend who I know would love these. It would definitely make her brown eyes pop. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass on this. The next brand we have is CoverGirl. We have the Reverence palette and then the True Naked Sunsets. This is a palette that I was blown away by the quality of the mattes. I went ahead and swatched some of them for you. I'm telling you guys, these are so creamy and saturated. They perform like high-end shadows. Both of these are keeps. I don't know what it is about the Wet n Wild shadows or palettes. I just get so drawn to them. They're only $4.99 at the drugstore. There's so many great ones, but I don't need to keep all of these. Sadly, I think the first one to go is going to be Boo Crew. I've been holding on to this palette mainly for like these shades right here, but once again, I have so many like those in my collection already. And I've had this for years now and I've used it maybe two or three times. So that's a stupid reason to keep it. This was another Halloween one. This is Wizards in Training. Oh, see this shade here. This is kind of like the shade that was in the J Cat Beauty palette that I got rid of. This one is cute, but this was really the only shade that I was using. The other shades don't even look touched. So Ugh, we need to make space. That one's gonna go. All right, now this is where it gets kind of hard. Oh, we do have one more Halloween one. This is Coffin Break, but this one reminded me of like the old school, that one wasn't called Vanity. What was it called? Remember like the original, was it six or eight pan shadows? These just have really good warm shades in it. I love colors like that. I have so many, but 
it's what I like. So I am gonna keep this one. Now these two here are in their normal core collection. This is one that I used to use as like a reference to a modern, or wait, ABH, Modern Renaissance Drugstore Alternative. Obviously the finishes aren't exactly the same, but the color story is very similar. For $4.99, it's really nice. I love this camel shade here. This is a keeper and, I do like not a basic peach, but this is one I really haven't touched in a really long time. I think this is another one where it's just, it's time to go. I'm gonna keep two and get rid of three. Then we have a few single palettes, like standalone brand ones here. First up is LA Girl. This is one of their Pro Mastery Eyeshadow Palettes in, what are you in? 16 color. I don't know if it has an actual name. This is actually such a great palette. Unfortunately, I've dropped it. I've used the metallic shades quite a bit. This shade here is so stunning. It's one of those that is just ultra luxe and creamy. I personally like this palette. It's a great one from the drugstore. This is a keep. This is without a doubt a keep. Easily my favorite warm toned palette from the drugstore. I don't own the other ones from Flower Beauty, but Suns Blazing is where it's at. The mattes in here are just chef's kiss that is a keep and then this is one that i go back and forth on i actually loved the look that i created with the elf earth and ocean palette i love to use it with the uh, what is it called is it jalapeno something it's one of the elf liquid glitter shadows but i actually don't care for this half of the palette i wish they would have done like camel tones and browns over here i get that it's earth and ocean i don't care about the ocean side like not even a tiny bit, but the earth side is so freaking stunning. I love these dirty olive shades. I love the golds in here. So this is another keep. I just wish it was like a nine pan palette or no, I guess it would need to be a 10 pan <laughs> palette or just like I said, a palette that had more neutrals over here. Cause I don't know, blues just aren't it for me. Moving on to Profusion. I have said this time and time again, Mirage is easily my favorite from their line. If you love these like pops of purples, but then lots of warm tones, this is so pretty. They're incredibly affordable. Then we have this one called the Sapphires palette. I really only use like two or three shades in here. Clearly I loved Mellow. This was just like my go-to brow bone shade. And then I loved Camel and Destiny, but I'm kind of out of the face now while they still are great. I have so many other palettes with great brow bone shades where I can utilize more of the shadows. So this is another declutter. Two other palettes that are kind of standalone brands. This was in a recent monthly favorites and I still love it. It's the Koki Cosmetics Artist Palette in Goddess. I can create so many looks with this one palette. It's perfect just for everyday looks. It's just a great quality palette. This was a Christmas palette from BH Cosmetics, but I love the colors in here. You only need the tiniest bit on the brush. This is a palette that they should have made it permanent. It doesn't really scream Christmas to me besides the names, but the shades and the quality are so good. If you have a BH Cosmetics palette that you absolutely love that's in the permanent collection, leave it down below because this palette definitely makes me want to try out more of their products. So two keeps, but don't worry, we're about to start decluttering because now we're moving on to all of my ColourPop palettes. This is where I really have to be in a mood to declutter because when I see palettes like this, I'm just like, oh, I love the way that they all line up and look together, so I wanna keep them, but that's a stupid reason to hold on to them. While I love ColourPop, they're constantly releasing new palettes, so there's just no need for me to keep so many of them. I really only need to keep my actual true favorites. I think I'm gonna start off with these like harder nine pan palettes first and then we'll move from there. Going Coconuts, this was a palette where whenever I first received it, I actually did not care for it at all. Whenever you see it in the palette, I mean, it looks way more warm tone, but on your eyes, it goes on like a true neutral tone palette, which is good because I always use warm tones. So this one we are keeping. Mar, while it is really pretty, um, it's another one of those palettes where I really only use the neutral shades and I have so many neutrals like this already. I mean, I have not reached for this in probably two years. So it's time for this one to go. Then we have the Shayla Proceed with Caution. I actually really like the yellow in here. This is one that I do grab every now and then. So. Maybe we'll put this in the maybe. Then we have the brown sugar palette. Whenever I just wanna do a very light everyday sort of look, this comes in handy. Then we have Baby Got Peach. The shades in here are lighter, but I really do like these two colors down here. Um, this is more of a maybe, but 
I do think I want it. I got rid of that J-Cat Beauty palette earlier, so mainly because I knew I had this one and I feel like I reach for this more than the J-Cat Beauty. Mr. Sandman is such a great color. Ugh, I'm already sucking at this. Big Poppy, you know what, maybe... I like that this is all mattes and I definitely get more use out of that than brown sugar. I mean, the tones are different, but I haven't used this in quite some time. So I think I'm gonna declutter brown sugar and keep Big Poppy. Then we have Soul. Soul is so pretty, this kind of like corally shade, but that kind of reminds me of like the vibes from the Sweet Talk palette. I'm like cut baby cut. whatever i'm gonna keep it i'm gonna keep it uh i'm sucking i've only gotten rid of two lit is one that i do like but i haven't used this in such a long time i used to love this shade here mercy but i don't even really wear these like red tones that much anymore so plus i have a shade like this in the flower beauty palette okay that one can go the zodiac palette this is pretty, but to be honest, I really don't use this one like ever. It's nice. It's nothing against Kathleen by any means, but I just don't use it. This one, however, I was obsessed with. Just like Corduroy in the Emily Edits palette, this was a shade that I reached for a ton. We're going to keep that. We are going to keep the Menage a Moi palette. Sweet Talk, easily my favorite ColourPop palette of all time. It's so good. Then we have Sailor Moon. I did an entire video of this, but Sailor Moon is so nostalgic to me. While I don't really reach for this palette that much, it's something that I can't get rid of. The packaging, I don't even care. Judge me if you must. I love it. Dream Street is a keep. Then we have I Think I Love You. I had decluttered this palette once. Then I saw someone do a look on it, and I was like, oh my god, I need it. So then I repurchased it. And since then, I used it a handful of times and stopped again. So I'm like, do I really need this? Through my eyes, this was another one that I liked. We have the other Shayla collab. You know what? Whenever I look at these, while they are different, I definitely get more use out of the Perception palette, but I love this yellow. Ugh, what's wrong with me? We're looking at these palettes here. Big Poppy, all right, you know what? Going Coconuts, that is a for sure. So these five, six, six palettes here are the ones that I need to really think about. I do like the tones of this one. Um, like I said, I decluttered this once and then I bought it again. And honestly, like this is really the only shade that truly sticks out to me. I'm gonna get rid of it, I don't need it. Okay, this palette here, I do like this one. Proceed with caution. I like that yellow, but I have other yellows like that. Okay, this can go. Misunderstood, I actually really do like the shimmers in here. And then Baby Got Peach. I do like the mattes. Okay, we're gonna keep that. All right, so I feel better about that. With ColourPop, I ended up getting rid of these seven palettes. And then I kept 14. But honestly, seven is way better than what I thought I would do. I actually had one more Wet n Wild palette. This is the Bretman Rock Jungle Rock collection. I've only ever used two shadows in here before I would have been all about these red shades. While it's really nice, I just, I barely use it since I've had it. And I think this palette's maybe like two, three, two years old, something like that. So there is another declutter. I forgot I have these mini palettes from ColourPop. I do have another drawer that has like various quads from KBD brands, but I just plan on keeping those already. However, I don't think I need all of these. This one is really cute. This purple, I just, I don't use too many purples anymore. So a more can go. This one would be nice just to have for like an easy smoky eye. So I think we'll keep that one. I have so many warm tone shades. This is Crush. It is beautiful. I actually really like this color here. Oh no, yeah, that one we have to keep. And then finally we have Lyric. Wow, this one is pretty. It's just, I don't know, it's not speaking to me. So we're gonna get rid of these two and keep these three.
here is the drawer after decluttering. I kept 30 palettes. Three of the palettes though are these mini ones that are gonna go in a separate drawer, just where all like the little mini quints and quads are. And then I decluttered 20. So keeping 30, getting rid of 20, look how much more room for activities. I'm so happy with that. Now we can go ahead and move on to like the mid-range and high-end palettes. First up, I have Juvia's Place. These are two very obvious keeps for me. While I do love the Masquerade Mini, the Nubian 2 is hands down my favorite Juvia's Place palette of all time. I've used this palette so much and it looks untouched. You need the tiniest bit of pigment on your brush and it just packs a punch. Both of these are without a doubt keeps. Then we have Nabla. This is a newer brand to me. I have been using it for a little bit over a year now, but wow, totally blown away. Definitely keeping all of these. The side-by-side -side palette and Dreamy 2 are definitely my two favorites. The quality of both the mattes and shimmers are just ugh, perfection. I did do a tutorial using this palette. I'll go ahead and link it here if you are interested. Their cutie palettes are also really cute. Huh, cute. Um, we have the Platinum. You guys, the shimmers in here are just unreal look at that it just looks like melted molten liquid lava then we have i think this is bear, yeah wild berry this one is really cute too i love the shade here alchemy 2.0 it's one of those really cool kind of topper shades so juvia's place and nabla both of those are definite keeps then we have two faced I did get rid of some in that previous declutter where you guys were yelling at me about not showing all of my palettes. The Natural Nudes is definitely my favorite Too Faced palette of all time. The quality of the shades are great. The Just Peachy Mattes was one that I was going to declutter. I'm so glad that I didn't because I've been getting a ton of use out of this. Not so much this month, but last month and the month prior to that, it was like the only palette that I was reaching for. I don't think it's available at Sephora or Ulta anymore, but you can still get it on Too Faced site. Then we have the chocolate bar palette. To be honest, I've been holding on to this, but it's just time for it to go. When it first came out, I loved it, but I've just been holding on to it just to hold on to it. And no, I don't need it. I do like chocolate gold though during the holidays, whenever I'm just wanting to do like a fun metallic or shimmery look. So we will keep that. I decided to get rid of the original gingerbread palette and I kept the gingerbread spicy. Um... If I don't use it that much in the next month or so, I think it will be time to get rid of that. Natural at Night, this is a palette that I had like the very original packaging of. I lost it and then it was a palette that I immediately went out and repurchased. So this is a keep. I've been holding onto this one for way too long. When I first bought it, I was so into these sort of tones, but honestly, I haven't reached for this in quite some time. This camera absolutely hates me today. Do you guys remember when the Too Faced palettes came like in these tins and had little tutorials on the top? It's time to let this one go. That's my jam. I actually just got this one. I did a fun giveaway with you guys on IG stories. It's pretty, but I feel like I have a lot of those shades in these other palettes. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this one. Then we have these two palettes that came in the 2D Fruity collection. I love the metallics in here. While I don't use too many of purples, this shade right here is one that I love anytime I wanna do any sort of pink look. So I do wanna keep that. The pineapple palette, this is another one that's really pretty, but as you can see, this here was the main shade that I was gravitating towards. The rest of the shades are great. The packaging is super cute, but I have a friend who I know would absolutely love this and would probably just get way more use out of it than I do. So we are going to declutter that. We got rid of four Too Faced palettes and kept six. All right, for the next brand, this is probably where not much is going to get decluttered. Just like with blushes, I love NARS eyeshadows as well. Some of these I don't use that often, but anytime they release a collection, if I don't get it in PR, I always love buying it just because I, it's just a brand that I love to collect. NARS and Laura Mercier are some of my favorite brands of all time, but there's something about NARS where like the palettes, I just like having them. I have decluttered several of these palettes in the past where I've just like shown on IG stories. I'm gonna quickly go through these Honestly, I don't know if there's going to be any that I get rid of. The first one that I'm definitely going to be keeping is Ignited. I love the shade here. Just the duochrome of it. It's stunning. Then we have Wanted. Yeah, I'm keeping it. I'm telling you, I don't think there's going to be much that I get rid of. Inferno, the glitters in this one are really cool. This is Afterglow. 
This is one that I probably could get rid of, but I don't know if I really want to. I'll put that to the side. You know what? I'm gonna go between those two. I feel like I could get rid of one of those. And then we have Provocateur. This, I love the shade right here. It's just so pretty to me. It's almost like a white gold sort of color. So over here we have Cool Crush. Down here we have Afterglow. Honestly, I'm gonna keep both because just recently, Laura, my best friend, was telling me about a NARS pouch. She's like, oh my God, you need to pull out this one. It's so good. And then I realized I decluttered it and it instantly made me have major regrets. So judge me if you must, but all the NARS palettes are staying. Sephora Love palettes, these are so good. They're $14. I think Sephora Collection is definitely a brand that gets overlooked at Sephora. But if you are just looking for an easy, small, compact palette that performs great, these are so nice. I'm going to be keeping both of the neutral ones. We have, shoot, what are you called? Um, medium cool eyeshadow. These look really similar, but swatched and on the eyes, they do look different enough. And then light warm. So we're gonna keep both of these. While these are nice, there's definitely nothing wrong with them. I have so many single shadows like these, like for the actual shades that I reached for more. These shades here, I didn't play with too much. So I am gonna declutter both of these. Then for some standalone brands, we have this one from Wander. This is their Wondrous palette. I really like the metallics in here. The mattes are honestly just kind of so-so, but the metallics is where it's at. Clearly, I love this shade right here, Flourish. This is a keep. Then this is from the brand Nomad. It's their Orient Express palette. I didn't think I was really gonna like this palette, but this is a palette that I've been using quite a bit this week. I really like the brow bone shade in here, the mattes, this shade right here. It almost feels wet. It's like so creamy, almost like a ColourPop Super Shock Shadow. It's like not, well, actually it is kind of just as squishy, but isn't that so beautiful? From Laura Mercier, both of these are keeps. This is an artist palette, right? I've had this for years and years, but it's just a palette that will always be in my collection. This is their Boheme Chic Eye Clay Palette. I've mainly been keeping this palette for this shadow right here. I mean, it's so freaking pretty, but I just, it's really interesting textures too. Like since it's that clay palette, they're kind of like squishy. I really like this color too though, just to create like a smoky eye. Uh, I think, you know what? I'm gonna hold on to that still. All right, now moving on to, let's do Urban Decay. I've gotten rid of a majority of my Urban Decay palettes. One that I know I'm gonna keep is the Born to Run. I personally love this palette. I know this gets lots of mixed reviews. Traviolet, I think I'm gonna get rid of this. I know there's people that love this palette. I just, I wasn't that impressed by it. Um, the colors are pretty, but it just, it's, a no for me dog the smoky palette i'm shutting everywhere this one i do like it's definitely like more cooler toned and neutral i don't have too many of those so i would like to keep that however the urban decay naked heat palette as much as i thought i was going to love this one i've gotten use out of it but for the most part it kind of just sits lonely and neglected in my drawer so this could get better love somewhere else this I keep purely for nostalgic reasons. I don't think I've touched it in I don't know how long, but this was my original and very first naked palette. So it just, it's sentimental to me and I just have to keep it. However, the wired palette, while this is cool and fun, I don't have other shades. You know what, Dana, you don't have other shades like this. So, I mean, you know what, I take that back. I'm probably gonna be keeping my Huda Beauty Neon palette, but I still think this is kind of fun and different. I think we are gonna keep this. For some bigger solo palettes, Tati Beauty, this is a yes. In fact, I just hit pan today on the Aura Matte Shadow. This is like perfect for my brow bone. It's so nice and creamy and pigmented. This is the Sydney Grace Tiny Marvels palette, the collab with Mel Thompson. Fortunately, I've broken the shade Mantis, but this is such a cool and unique palette. Natasha Don't, Denona. <laughs> Denona Sunset Palette. This is the only Natasha Denona palette I own. So this is a keep. And this is the only Kylie Jenner product or like Kylie Jenner, KKW, anything like that, any product that I ever purchased. But this just, it drew me in. I love all things Christmas and this palette is actually really nice. I mainly use these shadows here, but I really do like it. No regrets. Keeping that, then we have, let's see if I can do this without dropping it, all of my Huda Beauty palettes. This is where I realized that my mic 
dyed. But as I went through my Huda Beauty palettes, the easiest options for me to keep were definitely the larger palettes. I've been a huge fan of the new nude. Desert Dusk is hands down my favorite out of the three larger palettes that I have, as well as the Rose Gold Remastered. So all three of those are definitely staying in my collection. I've always been a fan of the Huda Beauty Mini Obsessions palettes. I'm keeping all three in the black packaging. However, after going through the gemstone collection, Sapphires is one that I just never really used. This kind of like taupey silver shade was really the only one that I ever touched. But as I've mentioned earlier on in the video, blues just aren't really my favorite. So that was an easy pass for me. Topaz though in the gemstone collection is another one that I love. And then we get to the neons. This is more of a packaging thing for me. I haven't even used the pink or the green neon palette. I have kind of dabbled in the orange one, but after opening these, it definitely gave me some inspiration, especially for some fun summer look. So I did decide to hold on to all three of the neons. Now moving on to Smashbox, I just have three different palettes here. First up is the LA Cover Shot Eye Palette. When I first got this, I was actually stuck on this palette for about two months. It is really nice, but I just haven't been reaching for it much anymore. And I just feel like I definitely have someone in my life who would get more use out of it. Then we have this Hoodwitch palette packaging, first of all, A+. And the shades in here are really cool, specifically this metallic shade. It just looks so good all over the lid, especially if you have like a green olive in the crease. And then I know I have decluttered this palette once before. It's another one of the cover shot palettes. Packaging is so cool, but I do not need it. Our next pile is my ABH collection. The first one that I'm getting rid of is the Artist palette. This thing is ancient. It's pretty. I feel weird getting rid of it, but I just... I haven't used this one in so, so long. However, the Lavish palette is another one that's old, but I don't care, I have to hold on to it. This is the Self Made palette. I went back and forth on this one, but I do love the shade Pink Champagne, so I decided to keep it. I originally thought that the shade was also in the Modern Renaissance palette, but I was wrong. I'm keeping both, and then my favorite, well, my two favorite ABH palettes, easily Jackie Ina. I think she did such an amazing job at picking the shades for this palette. They're just so vibrant and beautiful. And then of course, Soft Glam is an obvious keep. The next collection is Lorac. This is my very original Lorac Pro palette. The mirror is broken because Landon was a baby. He stepped on it. So I mean, I have to keep it. Then I kind of went back and forth on the unzipped palettes. The original unzipped is actually a repurchase because that was a palette that I mean, I hit pan on so many shadows of. I was looking at I'm like, do I really need to keep Lorac Gold? But I do, I don't reach for it that much, but anytime I do create a look with it, I'm always so happy with it. So both of these palettes are staying. Really good metallic palette is the Jouer Skinny Dip. That's a keep. I swore I decluttered the Charlotte Tilbury palette before. I think I did, and then I just forgot to give it to my mom when she came to visit. So I'm setting this aside again for either my mom or my mother-in-law. I think either of them would get great use out of it. These palettes are so expensive. They're pretty, but I definitely feel like I have cheaper palettes that work just as well. Moving on, we have the these two Inglot quads, the purple one I actually created at like the very first eye mats I ever went to. So another sentimental product. And then the other quad they actually set in PR. The color combination is so pretty. So I will be holding on to both of these. If you were lucky enough to get the JLo Inglot collection, I don't know if this camel shade is still available. If it is, you need it. It is the best warm crease color ever. I got an extra and I gave it to my friend, Laura. It's so good. Speaking of Laura, we have Laura Lee. This is a different Laura, but as much as I loved the cat's pajamas palette, I don't really reach for it much anymore. So I'd rather give it to somebody else, but I will be holding on to her collab with Violet Voss. I love the shade fried in Alabama. This is such a good palette. I forgot. I do have one other Nabla palette. This is the secret palette. It's actually not my, well, it's my least favorite out of the bunch, but I'm still holding on to it. Then we have Marc Jacobs. I got rid of pretty much all of these iconic palettes, but I did hold on to Editorial. I just really liked the color story in this one. And then the larger palette was actually, I think, a Christmas collection a while ago. The main reason I've been holding on to it is because the mirror, it's great just to travel with because it's so thin and compact, but I would really only take it for the mirror. I wouldn't use a shadow. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this palette home while I'm in Florida to give it to my mom. And I don't know what it is, but anytime I think of Persona, I also think of Dose of Colors. Like these two brands are always next to each other in my collection. So let's go ahead and start off with Dose of Colors. I was obsessed with Marvelous Mauves for such a long time. 
It's nice, but I just don't really wear it too much anymore. And the same friend that I was gonna give the Revolution palette to, I'm also gonna give her this one. Then we have the Dose of Colors. This was a quad that was like a collab with Desi and Katie. I would bought the entire collection and I'm sad to say I was pretty disappointed in this quad. It arrived broken and the only shade that I really use is the bottom right shade. I just like those sort of like olive, taupey, silvery colors. The other three shades were just really dry in my opinion. I heard their actual palette was amazing, but moving on to Persona, I will be holding on to both the original Identity palette as well as Identity 2. If I could only pick one, I would definitely recommend the Identity palette, especially if you just like softer makeup looks. I don't know why my Makeup Geek palettes were in this drawer. Actually, I do, because they were smaller and able to fit in this drawer. I'm gonna be keeping my singles. I have the Makeup Geek and Manny MUA collab. Whenever this first launched, I used it constantly. Or I have a lot of these in singles or something very similar. So I just think it's time to go ahead and get rid of this one. I forgot about this mini Persona palette. While the quality is really nice, the pigmentation is definitely there. I have a lot of these similar shades in the larger Huda Beauty palettes, whether it's like Desert Dusk or New Nude. So I think it's time to pass on this one. However, this bad boy here, Stila in the Light. This is one that makes the cut every single declutter. It's just so nostalgic to me. I had this one and in the garden. I think I ended up decluttering that one, but this will be another product like the naked one where it will just live on forever in my collection. And then finally, we have my MAC palettes. I have two palettes of singles. I will be holding onto both of those as well as this, I think it's Natural Vice palette. I just love this collection. I did an entire video on the collection. Honestly, it's more for the packaging. I'm not even gonna deny it. It's just beautiful. I do have two quads from Patrick Star. I've been holding onto those. I decluttered a lot of the other ones. So those will be staying. But then this last one, I think it's called Kabuki Doll. It's a mini nine pan palette. I took it to travel a few times. It's nice. Unfortunately, I did shatter two of the shades. But I just have so many other palettes like this, whether it's like MAC Singles, ColourPop, ColourPop palettes, or Makeup Geek. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this one too. I almost totally forgot. I recently got these in from Sydney Grace. They're the new collab with, is it Temtalia or Temtalia? I've always said Temtalia. Look at the shades in these. Let me know if you guys would like to see a tutorial or mini review of these palettes. I've been dipping into a lot of like the mauve pinky tones. You guys, the quality is just so good. The first Sydney Grace palette I ever tried was the Mel Thompson one. So I was blown away immediately with that. So I've been having a ton of fun playing with these. All three of these are staying. As you can see, this drawer now opens and shuts with ease. I'm so happy with it. I can see everything. I did go ahead and put some of the overflow down here just because like with the smaller palettes, I didn't wanna show them all the way in the back. Things are already moving around. My hair is everywhere. But just like like the Noble palettes and the Huda palettes and then just like all the larger palettes back here. These I won't forget about though because there's so many palettes that I reach for a ton back here. For instance, the Juvia's one, the Tati Beauty palette, the Stone Cold palette, Stone Cold, <laughs> Stone Cold palette, and then that BH Naughty palette. I wanted to make sure all that these smaller ones were up front and center, so. Oh, so much better. Let me go ahead and give you a quick overview of what I'm getting rid of. Oh, one thing. I did actually decide to part with the Urban Decay Wired Palette. I've just, I've had it for a while and I haven't reached for it, so I don't see myself grabbing it anytime soon. I don't know what happened with my counting. I think earlier I said it was 20 drugstore palettes. It's 17, unless I pushed something aside. I guess I just miscounted, but here are all of the palettes that are leaving. I did a pretty good dent with ColourPop. I'm really proud of that because as I mentioned earlier with ColourPop, especially these like harder nine pan palettes, I just liked having them all lined up, but that's such a stupid reason to keep them. So here's the drugstore section that's leaving. And then for high end, we are getting rid of 20 palettes. I'm so proud of myself, 37 palettes. That's a lot to get rid of. I know I kept a ton, but I mean, I made a pretty big dent. So I'm happy for these to go off to new homes where they will be loved and appreciated. All right, so that's it for this video. As always, thanks so much for hanging out today. If you haven't already, I would love if you subscribed. If you wanna see more, you can always go give me a follow over on Instagram, follow me along on stories. I've been giving some book recommendations and mini book reviews lately. So if you do have any good books that you've read, head on over there, leave them in the comments or leave them in the comments here too wherever but yeah that is pretty much it so i will see you guys in the next one bye